Hey, you know what's a great thing to make on a day at home? Freshly baked bread. You make it with flour, water, yeast, oil, and salt. You see the dough forming and you feel its texture, the way it smells and how it looks. Then you place it in the oven and out comes this amazing bread. The whole process just makes you grin from ear to ear. The particular bread I'll be making today is an easy, no need, and high hydration ciabatta. So it's not going to have any sort of kneading and it's also going to have a very open crumb, which means it'll have very numerous beautiful air pockets. You also don't need anything special to make it. Even a stand mixer is optional. So now we've gotten all that out of the way, let's get straight to making it. First, before we begin making the bread, we need to mix up the poolish and let it ferment. This is probably, hands down, the easiest step in this already easy recipe. So just grab 100 grams of bread flour and then the same amount of yeast water. it together and cover it up with plastic wrap. What we're aiming for in this step is a nice slow fermentation. This will add a lot of really delicious and ripe flavor to our bread. To get that, we have to leave the poolish for at least 10 to 18 hours. If you want to leave it for any longer than that, you can put it in the fridge and it'll last for up to two days after you make it. The key to knowing exactly when our poolish is ready is to look at the surface. To explain, when we first mix together the poolish, nothing has happened yet and it'll just look like this. After a while, it will start to spread out and gain a relatively flat surface. Then the yeast will start to kick into action and the surface will start to puff upwards just a little bit. This is due to the gas that the yeast produce. However, this intensive production is due for a slowdown because the yeast, having reproduced very rapidly and consumed so much will eventually run out of food. That's why after a certain point, the surface will stop rising and start to slowly deflate. Ideally, we want to get the poolish to where it has concaved slightly downwards. This is a sign that the yeast are going hungry as explained, and this is where we want them, because they will be at their most voracious and active in this state. So as soon as this happens, your poolish is ready to go. Just like this poolish here. So now that the poolish is done, onto our bread dough. Grab 150 grams of flour, 5 milliliters of vegetable oil, 2 grams of salt, and your poolish. Also prepare around 80 milliliters of water. Okay, now that we have all the ingredients, this is where we'll start mixing. If you have a stand mixer, then this is where it's used. If you don't, then don't worry, just continue on and use whatever you have on hand. For either one, the steps are the same. So start by putting the poolish into your mixing bowl. Then we're gonna pour in a third of the water. I'm also using it to clean the poolish bowl while I'm at it. Using a spatula, I'm now going to mix in the poolish with the water. Then, we're going to alternate adding flour and water in. Since I'm doing it by hand right now, I'm going to put the spatula away because this is a pretty sticky part. And while you can use the back of the spatula to mix things up, we're going to be using the spatula again later, so I want to keep it clean. So I'm going to switch to mixing this with chopsticks because I've found that they're very convenient. However, you can use any similar tools. It's important to note that the water here is being gradually added in, not all at once. If you add all the water in at once, it'll probably get very difficult to handle, and you might end up with a dough that's too wet. So we add the water in just bit by bit. Then pour in the oil. I'm using olive oil here, and I'm just gonna mix it a bit more
also mix in the salt. It should look something like this in the end. If you start to question whether you're looking at bread dough or a lazy slime or maybe some weird yogurt, then you've probably completed the mixing process. It will be extremely sticky as well. That's completely normal. Okay, so now it's time for us to prepare a new bed for our lazing dough. Lightly coat a bowl with some oil. We're using olive oil again. transfer your dough into it. We now let it rest for 45 minutes. Once that time's up, we'll come back to do a bit more work on it. Since this is a no-knead bread, there won't be anything very strenuous like kneading. We're just going to be folding the dough. So after 45 minutes, we're going to first dip our hands in water and then fold it like so. We turn the bowl and do it on each side. This will help build the gluten structure in our bread without degassing it. So all those lovely little bubbles will stay inside our bread, making gorgeous air pockets later. You can do this round of folds just once, so four folds, one on each side. However, if you'd like to make sure that it's been thoroughly folded, you can do a total of eight folds, so two rounds of one on each side. We'll do this routine of folding once every 45 minutes for a total of four times overall. progress through the foldings, the dough should become airier and airier. This is a sign that the yeast are producing a lot of carbon dioxide. It should also become less sticky as time goes by and easier to handle. After all the folding is completed, you will see that our dough looks like a melted, lazy puddle. We are now going to give this lazy, melted puddle what it obviously needs, which is another 45 minute nap, so that it becomes fluffy and round. By the end of the 45 minutes, congratulations, our lazy puddle has grown into a beautiful balloon. <laughs> because while it certainly looked like it was just lazing around, during the time we left it, there was actually a ton of yeast activity. As a result of that, if you look at the surface, you should see a lot of the bubbles they produced, which is very good. So now it's time for us to shape our bread. Prepare your work surface by lightly sprinkling some flour on top. Use a small amount of flour here, too much might ruin the bread. Just enough to coat your work surface. Then we turn our dough out onto it. To do this, you can just flip the bowl onto the surface. No need to force it. The dough should drop out of the bowl by itself pretty easily. While it does that, it will just start preheating the oven to 230 degrees Celsius. Okay, back to the dough. Once it's all the way out of the bowl, we then lightly sprinkle a little bit of flour on top of the dough. There we go.
Now grab your scraper and divide the dough into workable portions. The key to doing this is to be fast and decisive. Then we're going to lightly tighten them up by using this motion. First, move the scraper towards you against the dough at this angle, then go around its edge in a circular move and push forward, scraping it off with another scraper. This is a rather important step. Building the tension in these portions not only make them look nicer, but also allows them to hold their shape and rise better. Now, prepare their baking tray by placing some parchment paper on top of it. To transfer your bread dough over, use the two scrapers on both sides to grab it like this, lift it up, place it down, and then do the same for the other one. Except now you just realize you place them too close together. So grab a pair of scissors and cut between them, separating them out. Okay, we now place them into our preheated oven. Make sure it's on top and bottom heat. Before we close the oven door, we're going to spray the oven with about six sprays of water, then close it and bake it for 25 minutes. bread. After waiting a bit for it to cool down, we can now cut it open. Look at that light and airy crumb. All these air pockets are due to the fact that we never deflated the dough. Just beautiful. The taste is also very delicious and ripe due to our poolish which we let sit for so long. The flavor is complex and slightly salty. Because this bread is quite thick, it's very suited for making things like sandwiches, so that's what I did. However, it tastes perfect on its own as well. 